Hello, this is an introduction to Lab 2 SQL Injection. As you can see, we have finished Lab 1 Buffer Overflow Injection. Um, you've received your feedback and hopefully you'll use that feedback to inform your report and your work for Lab 2. <clears throat> um, as we've already discussed, there's three categories of injection, low level, medium or high, and that's all referring to the amount of interaction the victim has to take, uh, get involved with when their attack is being performed. So SQL injection is another low level interaction. It doesn't require the user to engage with the attacker. The attacker uses a highly technology based attack, and in this case, an SQL injection string. So we did look at other ways of attacking or poisoning our systems. Uh, as you're going to find out, we're doing SQL injection, but there was LDAPs, um, XMLs, JavaScript, PHP, all forms of injection, um, XPath, etc. We did briefly look at XML just as, a, as another method of injection. And XML has a very strict format of a, a tag, a, a, a value, and then another tag. Okay, and that's built up as follows. So we have a root tag called user, then we use our name, our name, slash, and then close the tag, open the tag, password, slash, close the tag, and so forth. So we can build this up so we can store lots of information about multiple users, username, password, some ID, and an email address, perhaps. And then, of course, we can marshal this data into a URL. We talked about how we could maybe do a man in the middle attack. Um, so if we had these three values, username, password and email address, we would do our URL, PHP question mark, username equals Tony and password equals password and email equals email address. That's how you build it up. So you could either attack it from the user input's perspective or a man in the middle by attacking the URL. Um, so a typical form might be our name password, ID, and email address. And if we had to inject our name into the system, we could put foo, which would be fine, but if we actually put extra characters that are used by XML, we can actually trip the parser up and create, get it to do unusual actions or behaviors that we could use as an attack vector. So here we are, here we have foo, but when we have that slash and comment, so we could start breaking the XML in that way, pretty much the same way as using a comment in your SQL. So we may have an input parameter and again we could start inputting values. So inputting these values, so in this case here I've asked the student to, instead of inputting their username, inputting script tags and some sort of script action. So instead of putting in Philip, he put in script tag then alert and then the student ID and then close the script tag and then if that is not validated it will execute and create a pop-up here that will execute some Java code for us and that would be an XML or a HSS cross-site script injection using HML. So back to our SQL injection which is the basis for lab 2 we have this attack threat which is some external user we are performing an sql injection and we're trying to attack the sql part so we're trying to get it to do something unusual that would work in our favor as a bad guy um, also from your perspective you need to look at what security controls you need to put in place to stop these sql injections what are they after all? what are they after what assets are they trying to access and that's the data in the database and what business impact is that going to have so here we have our parser and typically we're, we're trying to break the parser or the this the analysis of the sql in order to get this guy to execute something that it wasn't supposed to execute. So, the orders of attack, we talk about a first order attack, a second order attack, and a lateral attack. A first order attack is where we enter attack strings in through the user input, and that's directly manipulating some form of SQL that gets into the database and executes. 
So those are one-off things. You do it once, you get some information, then you have to do another one and so forth. A second order attack is where you try and manipulate the system in order to create persistence or resonance on the database where it can be downloaded to the database and load away and, and carry out your attack on an ongoing basis. Lateral injection attacks are other means of getting access to the database and that might be a case of downloading a piece of malware, a backdoor rat or something. But lab to to is based around first order attacks, i.e. You're injecting an attack string through the user interface. So here we have a, a simple application. We have some username and a password, and that goes into some sort of maybe PHP pointer and things. It's concatenated together as a string, and then that string gets sent to the database. The database strips it out, analyzes it, and returns the information corresponding to the, the request. So here we have, this is called string concatenation, and this is just an example of the Java interpretation of it. So we've created a string, uh, give me my uh, balance query, select account number balance from account square account ID equals, and that gets a user ID from the, the input, okay? And then that would code would execute here. So what happens if we started putting in malformed inputs that would cause unknown or attack behavior on our strings? So here we have an example here. Again, you've seen this one before. User ID password. That's great. But if we actually start putting in attack strings, it truncates the SQL to do away with all this and password. And then just send select everything from users where user ID equals blank or one equals one, which is always going to be truthful. So it's always going to be true. Therefore, it's always going to send information back. So here's a, a very simplistic version. We have a client, a browser, that connects to an application that has a JDBC database wrapper. And here's our database. So a person could input information, send it across a bit power, send it to the database, and then the database would return the information. Lab 2 looks more like this. It's a simple application connecting directly to the database. So we have our JDBC, and then we have our little Java application, which consists of another wrapper and a start function that lets the user input some data. And your job will be to construct attack strings in order to retrieve as much information out of this database as possible, work out what value that data is, and then rewrite this code here to prevent that happening. Okay, and then make some recommendations what you could do to the system to prevent further attacks or create a defense in depth strategy. Okay, so parsing typically we parse all those strings together, the system has to compile it, and then some sort of optimization is done, done on it and it executes. But that, uh, so if yeah, so prepared statements really is about not using concatenation, it's about using what we call prepared statements. We build this string but it has a question mark in it. So this string is built and then we set the values later and then execute the string. So this value Philip is only placed in here. So it's less opportunity to create a, an attack string. And here's another example. So if it's an int, we have to do ps.setInt and give it a value. So if it's a string, select asterisk from da 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 question mark, then we can do set string the first question mark, which only has one, is followed. So we may have this insert into author's uh, ID, first name, last name, values, one, two, three question marks. So the first question mark is an int. So set int one and a number. The second question mark is a string so we do dot set string two and fill it and then with the last name is dot set string three okay and then update your e execution okay so this is an example of a prepared statement in java that you probably will see again okay so how do we prevent this well we could use prepared statements and we should use prepared statements but we need to do more than just rely on one mechanism to protect ourselves. We need to look a bit further in the input and as we discussed whether we should use whitelisting or backlisting. Um, as it said, coding. Um, so that is a preview of uh, 
uh, understanding behind LABO2 and now I'll go on to give you a quick demonstration of LABO2. So, the instructions, uh, exercise, simulates an API call on their database using Java code. That database is a small database that contain, contains kitchen utensils such as a kettle, a cup, a plate, a pressure cooker, etc. And your job is to craft SQL injections, i.e. pen test your system to see if it's robust against attacks. If you find that system isn't robust, which it isn't, you should then implement some code in order to prevent that. So you need to do your code rewrite and then talk about what other security issues or mitigation you can do to prevent uh, an escalation attack or any other form of attack or reduce the effects of a successful attack. So it's worth 25% of your marks. Uh, your marks are, will be based on your approach taken. Did you methodically go through the testings? Did you make the code changes? What recommendations? Um, you should show your results in the appendix, demonstrate that you carried out the work. A discussion on mitigation. What code changes? What other mitigations should you use? What other security controls? Uh, your new implementation of your code, clarity and ease of reading, your supporting material, you might reference certain things such as coding guidelines or standards, NISP or ISO, etc. And proof of exercises, okay. So very much in the style of level one, I want an 800 word report that basically is targets, that targets the management speak. Um, the impact to the business, what were the vulnerabilities find, etc. And then your appendix should be a detailed expansion on your running the test and then the code changes. You must show your code changes, okay? So I'll pause it there and... So this is your VM. So remember this was your... This was your test lab. This was lab one where you carried out all your previous work. And then we have lab02, and in here we have two database files. This is the database file you're going to examine. It's already all connected for you, so you don't need to worry about that, okay? So we're going to run up Java. This may run a wee bit slow, okay. Okay, so we have our Java program. So, Labo 1, this is Labo 2, and as you can see, it has Java query code as a wrapper for the, the database connector. And then we have our start, our user input. Now, the user input in this is very crude. Okay, so don't be expecting anything sophisticated. We just hit the run command here, and this will run up. Connect to the database, and we get a run up. So, we're left with a user. We have to log in with a, a username and password in order to get access to our database. And as I said, the database is a very simple form. So, I have given you a hint here, which the username is hint, and the password is hint, and we hit OK. And we get a, a wee pop-up screen. If I just close that, wee pop-up screen. And this dumps out the information this here is the information from the database. So as you can see, we've got a product called the kettle. The ID is one. The description for a device for boiling water. We have nine in stock and the unit price is 25 pound. Device two is a pressure cooker. ID two makes cooking food faster. We have five of those in and they're 99 pound. Device three is a knife. We've got an ID of three, cutting and chopping food. 23 of those in stock, they're 15 prime. We have another device called a cup, ID4, holding a drink, 200 of those in stock, um, 2.25. So that is the information that the user can access from the outside world. Pretty benign data, not that important. You're a customer, you want to buy things, you want to know how much a cup is, the description of the cup, etc. Down here, I've given you hints, okay? So uh, this one here, I've given you a username and a password in a hash form. So you have to figure out what that hash is. 
Also, I've given you the attack strings. So as we discussed in class, you have to attack the database in a particular order, working from the high level system tables down onto the user product tables, and these commands will do that for you. So we must first then work out what this password is. So if I cut and paste and then try and do a reverse on that. So, so if I put in reverse, Now, either this is an MD5 or a SHA1, I can't remember. So here we've got it here, so we can do. And the password is student, okay? So if we run our system again, we can get in and we go, student is the username. And the password was from this guy, which was student, okay? We'll be a bit lazy on my part, but okay, that gets us in. Now we can retrieve information. So if we retrieve information about the second product. Okay, so the second product was a pressure cooker, very a trivial example of a database. Okay, and this line here is just my code throwing out a hint for the student login. Okay. So you will see that repeatedly, but after the first stage, you can ignore it from here on, okay? So let's close this down and look at this. So these are our tags. So I have encrypted these slightly, so it makes it a little harder. So if we actually look at this string, I've decoded those are what 13. So all you have to do is Cut and paste it, find a page that will decrypt all 13 for you. And there we go. So remember we talked about the union command? Union all select names from SQL master light where one equals one. So what we're going to do is log in, put in a product ID of one to four, and then append this to this. This will execute and retrieve the names from here, which are the names of the tables. Okay, so if we run this, okay, so as we know, we have student. Okay, so we can put in our one, two, three, four, so we'll just put in one and append our product ID. And what we'll see here is we get a list of the tables, the names of the tables. So there's a SQL sequence table, and that table uh, is used at startup to create all the tables and all the, the structure of that table. So if we access that table, that will tell us a lot about these other tables and how they're made and what's in those tables. Or it's a secret table that has something in it, might be of interest, a product table, a user table, and a hint table, which we've already used. Okay. So let's go down to the next one. So we've now got a list of the tables. So you should be able to craft your next SQL injection. But well, I've got a cheat sheet here for you. So let's just do this. So what we're going to do is union all select SQL from SQL to where. Okay. So let's run this. And here we go. So there's student. Okay, so again, we could put in one, two, three, or four. It doesn't matter. We just have to satisfy the original structure and then add our union query on the end of that. And what we then get up is information about the sequence table. So the sequence table is going to create a table called secret and in there it has a field called secret as a text. It's going to create a product table and there it's going to have an ID which uh, is an integer. It has a name which is text. It's going to have a description, again text, an amount, an integer and the unit cost which is real. What is more interesting for an attacker is here's a table called users. Again it has an ID 
but it also has a username in text, a password in text, and an access level in text, and again the hint table. So we'll, the hacker will go after this table here, okay? So let's look at our next line down. So we're going to append this union and all select username from users where, okay? So let's take that. So it's username we're after this time, okay? there's a student and there's a hint okay so the next thing now we want to do is figure out oh, what are the passwords for those if we can get the password for admin we can log in as password and do whatever we want okay so let's take our next command now you can go and find cheat sheets of all these commands online hackers will have their own rule books to follow etc um, but I've given you them here okay so, one. so what we're going to do is union or select password from user table where one equals one, okay? So now what we've done, we had our original passwords, remember admin, sales, customer, etc. So we now have the hashes for those. So if we actually run our previous command, and I miss base, if I go back and run this command. Get the usernames. So what we can see here is okay so admin and this is the hash so if you want to do login as admin you've got the admin you've got the hash can you go and find somewhere online that these are reversed and so you need to go through and work out the reverses for those then log in and then see what damage you can do as admin etc okay uh, good luck with your lab. I'll see you there on Friday morning at 10 a.m. Thank you.